Welcome to the British International School Shanghai Pushi, and welcome to our very first virtual open day. The objective of today is to allow you to understand a little bit more about our school, but most importantly is to have a discussion about how you can help your child be the best that they can be. So at the course of the hour you'll see a virtual tour of the school, but I would encourage you to ask questions. Ask questions that are important to you, because at the end of the session we'll have a live Q&A with our senior leadership team, and we'll be able to pose your questions to them and to understand their response to what's important to you. So today you will have the chance to meet our principal, Mr. Lancaster, head of secondary, Mr. Kelly, assistant head of primary, Mr. Wei, and also Mrs. McConnell, and she is in charge of the whole school global languages. Ah, that's a lot of people, yes. and it's a great opportunity for you not only to get to know the school, but to get to know the people in the school, which is incredibly important. So to start, let's. Have a listen to our principal, Mr. Andrew Lancaster, who's going to give us an address on what he feels is most important in the context of an international education here in Shanghai. Welcome to the British International School, Shanghai Pushi. Our mission for our children is be ambitious, and here at the school, we're creating a new generation of innovators. Since the school opened 15 years ago. Our teachers have combined a tried and tested academic rigor alongside a STEAM learning methodology, allowing our students to excel academically, personally, creatively, and socially. Today, you will have the opportunity to see and hear much of what an education at Bispushi can offer your child. Underpinning our ambitious philosophy. Are five key pillars: academic achievement, STEAM with MIT, performing arts with Juilliard, internationalism, and sport. And you'll have the opportunity to hear how these factors can help your child in their education. For the purposes of this introduction, I'd like to focus on the academic outcomes of our students. For the last ten years, academic success. Has been the focal point of everything that we do with our students. For example, in the last four years, 60% of our IGCSE grades were A star or A level, the very highest grades that our children have achieved. At IB level last year, two thirds of our students achieved high enough scores in their IB diploma program to be able to enter the world's top. 100 universities, and every year, our IB students score, on average, around seven points above the global scores. So, how do we manage to sustain such high levels of academic success at the school? Well, I think it's a combination of four key factors. Firstly, it's our be ambitious philosophy itself for everyone in the school community. Secondly. Being part of North Anglia Education allows us access to a talent pool of 9,000 outstanding teachers worldwide, and our teacher development programs with North Anglia University, King's College London, Juilliard, and MIT allows us to attract and retain the very best teachers, and that translates into the very best learning for your child. Thirdly. It's our holistic curriculum design, engaging and interesting, but with academic rigor applied. And finally, it's the school community, parents and teachers who care about our children, and have a very clear focus on helping them to be the very best that they can be. I'm always happy to talk about how our school can help your child with the very best education. So, if you'd like to find out more, please don't hesitate to get in touch. In the meantime, enjoy your virtual visit at Bispushi today. Thank you. So we're here now in our early year centre at the British International School, Shanghai, and this is where the journey starts for all of our children from age two upwards. This is a really important part of the school because this gives the children their very best start in life, and the way that we approach it in the school is a whole school learning approach. 
So everything that we do in terms of the UK curriculum starts here. Everything that we do with MIT and Juilliard with our partners starts here. And that gives them the best possible chance to do really well academically, but also really well in terms of their development as a child. Yes, especially here you can see the happy smiles from the kids every day. Each teacher takes the health and safety of your child of paramount importance, making your child love coming to school and giving peace of mind to you. Your child can make friends here, develop the skills of social interaction, and enjoy being a part of this pushy community. And that enjoyment of learning and that enjoyment of the school is terribly important throughout the school. So let's go and take a look now at our primary school. Let's go to our Da Vinci STEAM Centre and to see what we do with the older children as they continue their journey throughout the school. So here we are here right in the heart of our primary school at the British International School, Shanghai Pushi. This is our STEAM Centre, our Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Mathematics Centre. It's here where the children come regularly to work on solving real world problems. So I'm joined here by Mr Wynn, who's the assistant head teacher here at primary, and I ask you how as a teacher you balance that academic rigour and the fundamentals of education with the innovative learning in, in the STEAM Centre. And what difference does that make to the child? Well, first of all, across the year, we carefully plan everything that we're going to do. So our English, our maths, our reading, our writing, we use the British curriculum. So we look at the objectives and we scatter it across the year so that we know what's coming up. With regards to our STEAM work, we try and join our STEAM work in with the rest of our uh, English, maths and writing curriculum. Mm. So take me through one of the projects that you've worked on and, and how you really make this kind of uh, design thinking, this real world problem solving, you make it real for, for children. And how do they react to that? What's the benefit of that for them? Well, here, this is a magical space. So children know that when they come up here, anything is possible. So in year two last year, they created a rainforest uh, over there. And it started off with our science unit, and we were looking at envi the environment and wildlife. And then it soon developed into 3D printing. It began with just making things out of Lego, and then it went into making actual 3D models using a 3D printer. For children here, we don't just stop at the Lego building we carry on. It's that critical thinking, it's that design process. When they start, they create, we don't stop, they then start again and they make it better. They make it better, better and better. And it, it's fantastic. All the children love to come up here. And it's really important though that the staff are also well trained, they know where they're going with it, and they also try and make sure that 
we are using our English, we are getting our writing objectives, our reading objectives and our maths objectives, sometimes together with our scene, but sometimes separately. And talk to me about what that does for, for the student in terms of being an engaged learner, in terms of you're being motivated to come and to, to learn every day. Sometimes it's difficult to, to get students engaged and to get students motivated to learn. How does working that way help? Well, it's important to remember that we are not educating our children for today. We are educating them for tomorrow. We're educating them for the future. So the skills that they are doing here is going to help them in the future. The children find this area, they find STEAM a magical, creative time. And I know for my child, he loves his STEAM weeks. I'm no doubt, I'm no doubt that they enjoy it here, and I know, I know that they, uh, that they develop a, a core set of skills, which is very useful uh, for school, but also for university and for, and for beyond. But I want to come back to the academic rigueur. I want to come back to how we prepare our students to make sure that they are as prepared as they can possibly be. They can be the best that they can possibly be in the fundamentals of, of education, in the fundamentals that many parents are interested in, the mathematics, uh, the English, uh, the history. Is, um, is the academic rigour and the STEAM learning, are they two separate things that you need to focus on? Or are there opportunities sometimes uh, to integrate the two? Yes, yeah, so again, as a British school, uh, we are following the British curriculum. So there are objectives that we have to follow. Sometimes we do intertwine everything, but sometimes it's really important that we don't. It's really important that we do focus on the key skills in each year group for each subject, and we do them well. Um, you can see here, this is we've got our maths learning wall and we've got our English learning wall. Um, and it's a scaffold, it's a scaffold for the children so they know what they are doing uh, weekly. And that's the expertise of the teacher, to know when to focus on that academic rigour, when to kind of allow the students to lead the learning, and when to use the different learning environments that are available here to, to everybody to make yeah. the, best, uh, the best for the, for the child. Uh, Mr. Wynn, thank you so much for uh, sharing your insights with us and how you make a difference for children here within the primary school. What we're going to do now is we're going to continue uh, our, uh, our tour of the British International School Shanghai and we're going to go and find Echo who is uh, sitting down with uh, Mrs McConnon who is our Head of Global Languages and we're going to talk a little bit about how we approach Mandarin learning at the school. My name is Marlon Devonish and I am Elite Performance Coach here at Bispushi. I was a professional sprinter for over 20 years. I've been to three Olympics and I've always enjoyed speaking to students and being an inspiration to them. So after my athletic career finished, I had the opportunity to come here and work on their challenges. It was an offer I could not refuse. Mr Devonish thinks the training shouldn't always be work, work, work. It involves a little bit of fun as well. He's already been in the Olympics, means that everything he's saying is proven to work. There are a lot of benefits that sport can give students here. There's the obvious one, which is physical. You also have the emotional, how did they deal with the trials and tribulations? How did they get through the hard times to be successful? Sports, I think, teaches you a lot about commitment and hard work and the fact that you definitely can't cheat with training. You get back everything you put in, which is a good tra transfer into lessons as well. 30% of our cohort here scored 40 IB points and above. Of that 30%, 75% of them are student athletes. So there's a massive correlation between your sports performance and what you do in sport that crosses over into your academic. It's fascinating working with the kids. There's so much opportunity for them here. I wish that I had the opportunities they have, whether it be sport-wise or the academic range that they have is fantastic. To be part of that is something that I'm very proud of and look forward to doing more in the future. Hello 
那么，音像是一所国际学校，我们的学生们来自于世界各地。嗯、呃，目前的话，汇集了将近六十多个不同国籍的孩子们在一起、嗯，学校也因此开设了七种不同的语言课程学习。嗯，我还记得这个第一次见到夏老师的时候，我被他这个呃、嗯、北京味十足的普通话给深深的折服了。那么夏老师，首先不妨您先介绍一下自己，让我们在嗯屏幕前的家长朋友们也可以认识一下您。好，谢谢谢谢。嗯，我在中国已经十五年了。呃，开始在兰州，然后就搬到北京，在、嗯、在北京呃学了一段时间，很长时间，嗯、确实，呃，然后学获得了一个对外汉语的一个硕士学位，嗯、很厉害。啊、呃，最近我就在上海、嗯，我就觉得我就把中国当做我的第二个家，当做第二个家，非常有意思。嗯，是这样子，我们在嗯访校的时候，经常会碰到家长会给到我们一些疑问，嗯、他们会问，哎，英国学校的学生究竟学不学习中文呢？那我想这个答案是肯定的，因为中文课程会贯穿到我们所有的不同的年级。嗯，我们的孩子们从两岁进入到幼儿园，渐渐的去了小学，进入到初中以及高中。中文的课程是渗透到每个不同的年级的。那么。中文课程究竟在音校是怎么样进行开展的呢？嗯，夏老师，呃，中文课在我们学校是一个很重要的一个课程。嗯，一般一年级呃孩子开始正式的学中文就学学呃怎么写字。嗯，呃，我们就把中国的普遍教材嗯当做我们的主要的教材、嗯，从一年级到四年级。嗯，呃，我们一般就学第一本和第二本。当然，我们每个信息因为英文呃英国学校还是强调英文的。呃、嗯。我们中文课稍微小一些，所以一般来说，孩子就上三到四节课。嗯，呃，到了五呃五年级呢，我们还从不同的地方选择教材了，嗯、台湾呢、啊，呃，新加坡呀、啊，嗯、呃，北京啊，等等等。更广的地方。更广的地方、嗯。然后我们那个教材，我们是选的我们觉得对孩子比较感兴趣的嗯、呃、教材。嗯。呃，到中学也是，嗯、呃，我们自己编的呃教材，而且。自己的课本，对对对，呃，然后我们还是以孩子为主的，所以我们觉得孩子，呃，最感兴趣的，呃，课文是什么？然后在我们的课文里头有很多比较方面的，呃，就是学习，跟国外的，呃，比较一下。还是很有意思，嗯，当然也有些家长会问到我们，哎，这个音校这个中文课程和我们的嗯公立的学校、嗯，或者说我们的双语的学校，在教学模式上面会有些不一样吗？对对对，这很有意思的一个问题、嗯。我觉得我们的教学很不一样，因为我们是以孩子为主的，嗯、呃，所以比如说呃，基本上在课上，呃，孩子会就是跟。他们的同学一起讨论一个问题，嗯，然后他们是通过这个而研究一个题，啊、嗯呃，或者他们上网上那个 iPad 也可以，就是研究一个题，啊、呃，所以我们是通过讨论性的呃研究的呃来记录呃这个这个课文，嗯，呃，而且我们不是呃老师讲话，孩子听。嗯然后就比较被动的，比较被动的，对，嗯、所以孩子积极的，呃、嗯，要想他们自己的，就想出他们自己的观点，嗯，呃，所以我们觉得我们的就是教学法很很不一样、嗯，这个会让学生进入这个课那、这个课文，嗯，呃，所以这样他们学的更快一些，嗯，好，这个是我们有关中文课程的一个学习的一个内容。嗯那么，音校是一个非常多元化的一个学校。那么，学生的校园生活也是十分丰富多彩的。我相信，除了这个常规化的中文教学之外，我们学校还有许多与中文课程或者是中国传统文化息息相关的一些活动在并行开展着。夏老师有哪些呢？好，我们有很多。呃，特别是春节，一般来说我们会做一个描绘，嗯，然后我们就呃，所以一边做一个描绘，孩子有很多。不同的那个文化活动，是呃，我们还有表演的。一般来说，呃，每个每个年级的孩子都有机会表演，嗯、呃，中国方面的一个一个什么歌呀，或者一个一场戏或者什么，嗯、呃，所以我们很多，我们也是比较重呃重视那个吃饭方面的，嗯<笑>、呃，所以我们也在课场常常也做一点中国菜，嗯，呃，中国的家长也会呃到我们学校来常常他们也会提供一些呃让孩子。呃，常常的一些视频，嗯，很有意思。我们还有一个是小学，他们每年做一个演讲。
会，嗯，孩子特别感兴趣，他们自己从每个班里选呃最优秀的那个表演、嗯、那个演出，呃，然后我们都在一起聚一聚，然后孩子表演。呃，孩子这样可以看出来，他们一年之之内的那个发展，嗯、呃，所以他们很感兴趣，变化对。相信这样子之后，我们的中文教学还是非常有趣的，在英国学校。那么非常感谢我们的夏老师。嗯，接下来的话呢，我们再去找一找我们的 Simon， 嗯，继续我们的中学部的访校之旅。I just want to take a little moment to talk to you about our performing arts program here at the British International School, Shanghai, in partnership with Juilliard, New York. It's a wonderful opportunity, not just to increase your skills in dance, in drama, and music, but also it allows you to develop a whole host of other different types of skills, which are going to be increasingly important as you go to university and you look at later life. So the students here at Bisbushi who work in the performing arts, they work, they develop great technical skills in music, in different instruments, in drama, and in dance. But they also develop great performance skills. They develop great communication skills. So if your child is really passionate about the performing arts, or if you think that building these types of skills is important to your child as they develop through the school and into university, the performing arts program at the British International School Shanghai is a great opportunity. It's a window for every child to be the best that they can be in the performing arts. Welcome to the Hamilton STEM Center in the heart of secondary. I'm here with Mr. Kelly, our head of secondary. So, Mr. Kelly, tell us something about you. How long have you been here at Bispushi? Uh, this is my ninth year at, mm -hmm. at Bispushi. Um, I arrived in 2011. I've done a number of jobs, and and now I'm head of the secondary school. That's a very long time. Okay, uh, and we have been talking about um, balancing the. Academic rigor with uh, STEAM learning, mm. and I noticed that we have reached a lot of excellent exam results. So tell us something about that. Yeah, the the excellent exam results are are through um, hard work on on the part of the student, but also um, through fostering an environment which enables the students to ask questions. So, mm -hmm. so a big part of the STEAM philosophy, the STEAM agenda, is is. Developing independence and developing creativity, um, taking ownership of your learning, mm -hmm. understanding what you know, what you don't know, and then working out how you improve on the knowledge that you already have mm -hmm. to to ultimately gain those those brilliant exam results. If you, if you want to go to an excellent university, and sixty percent of of our students go to top world one hundred top universities, so. There's a lot of students that are making that that very high grade. If you want to be able to do that, you need to be able to uh, demonstrate both excellent exam results, mm -hmm. but also human skills, mm -hmm. which are beyond just pieces of paper. So, th your ability to empathise with people, mm -hmm. your ability to to take an initiative. And we know we are trying to build students like. And very confident, innovative, and independent learners.、Mm. So we must have a group of outstanding teachers.、Mm. So how about our teachers here? Yeah, we we have outstanding teachers. We're we're very lucky.、Um, every every job we advertise, we 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 have a lot of excellent applicants. So we've、mm -hmm. got we're able to pick from very well qualified, very able staff.、Mm -hmm. um, we've got a large staff body.、Um, there's a lot of skills within that. 
I guess it's a, for us it's a combination of people having the the right experience, the right qualifications, but but primarily the right personality. Mm -hmm. We we want people that are going to fit with our school philosophy mm -hmm. of push push the students, support the students. It we want them to create that coaching framework mm -hmm. where where students are willing to to take the initiative themselves and and then not waiting to be told all the time mm -hmm. and and. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, excellent teachers. So. Yeah, and uh, I think some majority of our teachers are come from UK, right? Majority come from the UK, mm -hmm. uh, and a, a percentage will come from internationals. Obviously, uh, Bispishi is a very large school within North Anglia, so we have a lot of North Anglia applicants as well, which is good because we already understand that they're used to that quality type of education. Mm -hmm. But the majority of the staff we would employ would, would come from the UK. Yes. Great teachers, great students, and that, uh, that that creates great great results for people. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kelly, for taking the time to, to, to share some of the insights uh, with us. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to our uh, Q&A. So I hope that you've been thinking of many questions for us uh, to answer, because it's your opportunity to really ask your questions of what's important to you in terms of an international education here in Shanghai. So let's go for the Q&A. And welcome to the IB Centre for the Q&A panel discussion. This section is your opportunity to ask questions of our senior leadership team for what's important to you in terms of international education or, or how th you think uh, that you can help your child be the best that they can be. We are rejoined by our principal, Mr. Lancaster, also our head of global languages, Ms. McConnon, uh, our head of secondary, Mr. Kelly, and joined us uh, for the first time, uh, Miss Westwood, who is our uh, head of primary school. Uh, during the course of this session, uh, we're going to have an interactive question and answer, but Echo here is going to help us just with a quick summary in, uh, in, in Chinese for our, uh, our Chinese viewers. 欢迎来到我们的互动环节。坐在我身边的这位的话呢，是我们的普西的校长，Mr. Lancaster 先生。他的旁边是我们的夏老师，负责整个学校的语言环节。嗯，在旁边的这位的是中学部的校长，Mr. Kelly 以及我们的小学部的校长，Mrs. Westwood。欢迎。yeah, Mrs. Westwood, I'd really like to start uh, with you to get your perspective in terms of the primary school. Um, how do you feel that we really get the best out of our younger students? How do we help them uh, excel as they, as they go through the school? It's a really interesting question, Simon. Here at Bispushi, we pride ourselves on basing our curriculum on the English National Curriculum, which is a really strong basis. And then we're really fortunate, as a Nord Anglia school, we have the STEAM curriculum, which is based on our MIT collaboration. And that really gives our students the skills that they need to succeed further on in their education. So the early years curriculum is really where the children learn to be learners. They learn through collaboration, through interactive play. And then we really bring that through throughout the primary school into uh, Key Stage 2. And they're taking those skills that they learn in their STEAM curriculum into their maths, their English, but that, that really strong knowledge base on which to build those skills upon. So you've got the, the, the strong foundation of, of the knowledge. But with the young ones, there's so much about, about encouraging them, their curiosity. It's about making them feel, feel safe and, and about the wellness part of, of being part of the primary community. Can you talk to a little bit about what we do in that? Absolutely. Our youngest students, developmentally, children will start by playing alongside each other. And then as they get older, they play together. And it's really that that it is, is the essence of what a good early years and primary education is about. It's that well-being, it's that socialization, it's that collaboration. And we bring that all the way through the primary school that you don't always get in a more traditional setting, but we have taken the best of everything that we can and really put that into our curriculum. Uh, it's interesting. I know the primary school is very fun, very active. Uh, place uh, for, for young children to be. Can you just give us a, uh, you, you mentioned STEAM, you mentioned the certain elements. Is there a specific project that, 
that you could highlight in, in the way that you really uh, bring the fun, bring the joy, bring it alive for children? Absolutely. Each year, our collaboration with MIT gives us a, a convention. This year's convention was Elemental Con. And every child in the primary school, right from pre-nursery up to year six, participated. And it culminated in a showcase in December where children were showing each other and their parents just what they had learned. And it really showed that that engagement in their learning shone through in their enthusiasm and actually what they were able to talk about. So our youngest children in the early years looked at, at water. Our key stage one, our year one and two children looked at fire. Our year three and four looked at wind, and our year five and sixes looked at earth. And the conversations that they were able to have were really, really top class and just really showed that engagement and that love of learning and how that just en enabled them to learn and be the best they could be. It's really fun for, 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 for students. It's also really fun for parents and, and teachers as, as they was. get involved. So Echo, you know, Echo's going to do a quick summary just in terms of the, the, the academic foundation, but also that love and learning and the different projects they get involved in. 是这样子啊，在我们的整个的小学和幼儿部的话呢，嗯，我我们一直营造着一个安全、有爱、有趣，但是充实的这样一个校园环境。所以说，安全是我们非常注重的一个环节。那么小学部的这个课程呢，是以
and are able to make those decisions? Or do sometimes you need to support them and have a discussion with parents? How, does it, how, do, they, how do they make choices, the right choices? So, so making the right choices is, is, is tough because you don't know until afterwards that you've made the right choice. Sure. But, but we, the, there's a lot of support in from, from uh, higher education support with our higher education team in, in IB to uh, subject specialists all the way through the secondary school. So, for example, at year nine, when the students are making the choices for their GCSE options, they're given a, a lot of time with the teachers, uh, a lot of time with subject specialists and, and uh, opportunities to literature, uh, to access the literature on the website, things like that, which, which enable them to make the right choices. But ultimately, it, it's about having uh, trust in the teacher that you can go in and say, am I the right person for this course? Do I have the skill set for it? I think that's a really important point because we, we talk about the curriculum, we talk about the hard stuff, but actually children excelling is actually about trust. Mm. It's yeah. about building relationships, it's about coaching the teachers, and I think mm. I, I know that's something that you, you focus on a lot in, in secondary. Echo, do you want to just quickly summarize in terms of, uh, in terms of what Paul was saying there? 是这样子，进入到中学之后的话，学生的上课模式首先会发生一个变化。老师们呢会根据他们的学习能力以及学习习惯，将他们分到不同的组里面去。所以说，学生是用走班的这种形式来进行上课的。那么，嗯，除此之外，你们会发现他们的教学内容会更加的深入，他们的教学方式会更加的严谨，家校的这个互动的频率会更加的频繁。那么，一个学年下来，你们将会收到六份的成绩报告。这个可以足以体现学校和家长的互动是非常重要的一个环节。那么除此之外呢，我们想提到的另外一点就是我们和孩子之间的相处模式也开始发生了一些变化。我们会以更加平等相待的方式还和孩子们进行相处。渐渐的，你们会发现他们更加自信了，更加独立了。他们他们的肩上开始担任起他们所应该承担的一些责任。相信这也是每一位家长和我们每一位老师都所希望看到的一个现象。Thanks, Echo. So we've talked through um, the primary school and the pathway through secondary. Ms. McConnell, I'd, I'd like to talk specifically now uh, about languages um, and, uh, and to talk about Mandarin. When, when I meet parents uh, coming into the school, uh, they've got choices. Why do you think that, that Bispushi parents choose an international school? Mandarin is important. It's important to everybody here. Why an international school? What does that give them that, 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 um, that they like? A very interesting question. Thank you very much, Simon. Um, I think there are three aspects to this. I think the first aspect is we are able to offer a, a range of pathways that enable the children to study and to feel proud of their study. It is a challenging language. Um, but because we have native Chinese as a second language and uh, non-native pathways, um, the children can all study um, at the level that suits them. And we are very ambitious and we push the children um, to achieve their best in the language. And to do this, we cascade down the skills from IB right down to primary, so that we're very clear about where they're going. Uh, and you, you mentioned that about uh, assessing the skills. We've got a question that's come mm -hmm. through here um, from, uh, from some of our participants. It's talking about um, how does the school evaluate students' learning results in Chinese study. How do you evaluate, how do you track that progress okay. uh, within Mandarin? Okay, uh, well internally we have our own assessments um, as we do end of course and end of year. Um, we do, for um, non-native students, we also do external exams, for example, the um, HSK and the YCT exams, the Hanyu Shui Bing Kao Shi. Um, and then we go on to IGCSE, and at IGCSE level we have three different pathways. So we have the non-native, we have Chinese as a second language for those who've got a stronger background, um, and then we've got the native stream. So at IGCSE they take external exams and we analyze those after the exams as well. And for IB, again, we have um, a language A, a native stream, um, and you can do that at higher level or a standard level, and then also um, a B language for non-natives or for the Chinese as a second language students. Yeah, it's really interesting because it, it is very personal, but also mm. I think p parents and, uh, and students do want to track their progress mm. and, see, and see how they're going on. Uh, and I know with the, the Be Ambitious uh, philosophy, you're always pushing uh, students to, to excel. Well, our results are excellent as well. We always, um, on average, we're around um, six, which is about 0.3. I think last year was about 0.3 above the world average. Mm. Um, and many of our students, um, the native students, also do a bilingual mm. diploma, which is very challenging and looks really impressive. So in, adi in addition to gaining global citizen skills, mm. um, they also have a bilingual um, um, IB diploma so that when they're applying for university, they stand out 
um, amongst all other candidates. Yeah, talk to me about those, uh, those global citizenship skills, because you mm -hmm. have, I, I know you have the language and you have the technical elements of the language, but also you have Chinese culture, which is right. you know, very deep and, uh, and very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and why didn't, I, again, China has an important role to play globally. How do we help our students get ready for that? We have a two-pronged approach here. So we do, as you said, we look very much into Chinese culture all the way through from primary through to secondary. Um, so for example, um, when the students are studying in year eight, for example, they look at the generation gap. Um, and we ask the students to interview their mums or their grandmothers um, and to write an account of it and then to produce a gift that they think would um, be really personal for their mother. Um, we do, um, we engage in um, projects such as charity projects, such as the Giving Tree, um, bag where all students collect um, gifts and give them to migrant children and they write letters and we send students to go and interview the students in the school if we can. So where we can, we really try to engage the students in the local culture. If they're non-native students, we, in, we equip them with skills to engage uh, with taxi drivers or to go to a, um, a market and order some clothing and to negotiate. Um, so we do focus uh, very much on um, empathizing, engaging, and being able to enjoy Chinese culture. On the other hand, as you said, the global world is very important. Um, and in the study that we do, we're constantly comparing Chinese culture with Western culture. And that is a key factor of IB studies as well. Um, so for example, in year five, when they study um, a text on Venice, they compare it with Suzhou, and they do some research on that. Um, so all the way through, we try, and the methods we use, I think I talked about them in the interview we did earlier, um, are very much around collaboration and research skills and really looking into developing your own view on things. And these are critical to being a global citizen. This, this yeah. is a really important element, uh, and, and it comes through actually listening to Ms. Westwood, Mr. Kelly, and Ms. O'Connor, forming your own view mm. and, uh, and, and expressing yourself. And uh, just for, for Echo to summarize, I think that we talked about uh, the, the kind of uh, the rigor from the question that we had in in terms of evaluating uh, students as, the, as, they, as they go through, but also the perspective that uh, Mrs. McConnell's team have in terms of deepening the understanding of Chinese culture, but also the recognition now that China plays such an important part in the world is the opportunity really to take that global perspective. 的确是这样子啊，这个有关中文的话题，相信是许多家长比较热门，也是比较关心的一个问题。我们想一分为二说，首先的话来说一说教学。教学的话，中文课程是一门比较这个呃必修的一门课程，在音效从幼儿园就开始了，每天都有三十分钟，一周会有五节课。进入到小学之后呢，你们会发现一节课的课时被拉长了，拉长到五十五分钟，每周将会有四级的中文课程。中文的课本从小学部的这个部编版到了。中学部之后，我们用的是自编教材，也会发生一个变化。为什么会有一个这样的一个变化？其实我们是希望用这个呃国内的教材来打好基础。嗯，但是我们的大多数的孩子，毕竟他们不太会回到体制内参加我们的高考和中考，所以说呢，我们用自编的教材，为他们以后所面临的 IGCSE 的考试也好 ，IG 的考试，呃呃 IB 的这个考试也好，做好充分的准备。当然，我们每一届的这个考呃考生们、毕业生们，在我们的中文这门科目当中的考试也是非常优异的，这是我们非常引以为豪的一点。随着年龄的增长，你们会发现他们嗯，只、呃、嗯。文言文啊，古文观止啊，这些文学名著，他们都会被学到。所以说，相应的这些中文的知识点，他们一个都不会少。另外一个方面的话呢，我们想说一说这个教学的一个模式，它会渗透在这个我们的整个的日常的教学，中文的教学过程当中。比如说，夏老师刚才所提到的，之前我们采访中所提到的这个中文的一个演讲，相信如果有机会，你们今后走到音效的这个校园里，看到我们这些孩子们站在舞台上。自信满满，并且用流利的中文去侃侃而谈的时候，你们应该为他们而感到赞叹。那么，呃，中国新年的时候会有各种各样的庙会活动，热闹非凡。夏老师刚刚也提到了，哎，他们会用问卷的形式，他们会与国际学校之间有不同的这个这个互动。以不同的形式来开展中文的教学，嗯，这些现象在学校里面每天都在上演着。由此可见呢，呃，整个学校对于中文的这一门科目是相当重视的。Thanks, Echo. Uh, and now I'd like to move to to our principal, Mr. Lancaster. I've got a very interesting question about um, uh, the new normal uh, post-COVID-19. But I'm going to ask you, uh, I'm going to ask you that. But I'm going to ask you something first. 
I just want to tap into your experience uh, over the past uh, 20 years. So many students that you've worked with that, that have done, done very, very well. Talk to me about what it is uh, about the students uh, that really do well. What is the difference that make the difference? I think our parents are, are keen to understand for their child, how can they help them be the best that they can be? What is it that those really great students do differently uh, that, that get to the, the top 50 universities or get to, to where they want to be? Sure, thank you, Simon. So uh, I think I would refer back to the video that we had a look at earlier um, at the very start uh, of today's program. And that's really our Be Ambitious philosophy. And it's the students that, that have that ambition to be that successful that we really see uh, do very well at university and beyond. So what, what's our role in actually uh, making sure that those students can be ambitious? Well, I think we've heard some great examples today about how the pillars that we have in place at the school are brought to life. So, uh, you know, academics we know is really important for our students to do well at university, but it's how our students think through those. And we've, we've heard today about the, uh, the STEAM program at the school and uh, the challenges that the primary school students take on. Uh, I think back to the festival that we had earlier in the year on elementals and the collaboration and the confidence of the students from a very early age to engage in a different way of thinking. To do you have a favorite challenge you know do you do you, do you have well, a something that really stretched yes. them that, that, that brought that confidence uh, out? Well for me it was the the challenge about uh, wind and the Shanghai uh, Tower oh, yeah. and so the question the students were asked was why doesn't the Shanghai Tower blow over during a typhoon and of course that you know sparks their curiosity and their imagination and they investigate the science behind how it works uh, and I think that's really important in, in, in the curriculum that they have those kind of questions those big questions that they can challenge so uh, it's a different way of thinking uh, and then we see as we go through the school a real focus uh, on students being able to take opportunities in performing arts so I think back to this year's production of Little Shop of Horrors fantastic quality and it was those students that really put themselves out there really challenged themselves uh, to perform in front of their peers, uh, to polish their presentations, and we had a fantastic production. But those are the students that take those opportunities. It could be in sport. Uh, it could be taking part in events across China, across Shanghai, uh, even internationally. Uh, Fiona talked a little bit about internationalism. Well, uh, you know, our students travel to Cambodia uh, on support projects, to Tanzania and our camp there. Why? They're taking those opportunities, and it's our role to provide them and to encourage them and to nurture them and to grow their curiosity. And that's what our expert teachers do, and that's what results in students achieving well academically and making that difference in their university applications. So, so that foundation... That foundation is academics is, is, is critically important, but it's not enough. You need to have that confidence. You need to have that, that uh, ability, uh, just a little bit of courage, uh, to go and uh, and do those uh, those performances and, and uh, as as Mr. Kelly and the team have mentioned to, to create that that platform by which they can take those opportunities. Yeah. So so Echo, do you want to just do a quick summary? Uh, yeah. Um. Actually, as a school, we hope that every child can make their way to the best in their education path. 一个学校来说的话，学业的这个卓越的一个成绩是相当重要的。嗯，但是，嗯，每一年我们的毕业生他们考出去的这个分数，他们的一个去向一直是呃，让我们的这个普西的这些老师们一直为引以为傲的一个方面。但是，仅仅只有这一些嘛，我们希望能够给我们的孩子们能够提供更多的平台，更多的机会。那么，这就是为什么我们会和呃全球顶级的这个 Julia 音乐学院有一个合作的一个关系。嗯，这样一来的话，在艺术的这个熏陶下，能够让我们的孩子们变得更加的自信，和嗯，麻省理工学院的这个 STEAM 的科学的这样一个课程，能够让我们的孩子们勇于创新，勇于探索，一直保持一颗好奇的心。当然，嗯，这个运动方面在学校也是丰富多彩的。一来的话，可以帮助我们的孩子们强身健体；二来的话，在运动的过程当中，我们的孩子懂得了什么叫做团队合作，什么叫做竞争意识。嗯。
这里是一个小世界。为什么这么说？孩子们来自四面八方，来自于世界各地，他们汇集在一起，也带来了不同的文化。文化和文化之间，他们会有相融，当然也会有不同的一个冲击。当孩子们碰到不同的想法、不同的。看法的时候，我们并不希望他们去盲目的去跟从别人的想法，但是我们需要让他们了解到，这个世界是非常多元化的。同样，嗯，这个一个问题，一个事物，不同的人，不同的文化，不同的国籍，他们可能看待的一个角度，他们看待的一个结果就会不一样。所以说，由此能够帮他们来形成一个更加健全的世界观，帮助他们成为一个良好的或者是更加优秀的世界公民。嗯，以上这一些能够帮助我们的孩子，相信一定能够帮助我们的孩子在求学的路上走得更远，走得更好。当然，相信他们的人生道路上也会如此。Thank you, Echo. It's interesting because the the school does pride itself on helping students solve real world problems and real world challenges.、Um, Post COVID-19 is a real world problem and real world challenges that 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 everybody. Uh, is working on, and one of the questions that's come in here is, what changes do you expect in the school、uh, as the new normal、uh, post COVID nineteen? So,、uh, could you talk to us a little bit about that, Mr. Lancaster, in terms of how the school is preparing、uh, and what your expectation is、uh, in the coming months and years?、Uh, thank you, Simon. Yes. So, one of the biggest challenges that we've all faced, and and firstly, I hope that when you're watching this webcast, it's.、Uh, it, You're safe and well as a family, and and it's it's your child's safety, it's all of our safety that's a real focus for us. And it started back in、uh, in, in January for us,、uh, thinking through how do we support the students、uh, with our virtual learning program,、um, and that's evolved and improved as we've moved、uh, through recent months, so that our students have a diet of live lessons with their teachers,、uh, as well as、uh, e-learning activities. Using some of the best platforms, so so we've really focused first of all on the children and their continuing education, supporting those students that have university applications, our GCSE students, but all the way through down to our, our youngest children as well, and and making sure that we can keep alive that interactivity with their teachers, with their classmates,、uh, because that's important, particularly at a young age. So so there've been real challenges for families. Uh, as well as the, the the school and the teachers to provide that program. Now we're moving into a phase where、uh, schools are starting to be given permission to reopen in Shanghai,、uh, and and we've been working on that again right since January in terms of、uh, our plans and our work with the local governments to make sure that、uh, all of the criteria are met. So that when the children come back to school, and it's likely to be a staged approach from our eldest students to our youngest,、uh, they understand、uh, exactly the protocols that they'll follow to make sure that we keep our social distancing measures in place, that our uh, uh, that our sanitisation process at the school is thorough and rigorous,、uh, that we educate our children and our staff and our community、um, about how we will have to change our social habits. Uh, how we'll have to make sure our hygiene routines are clean. So there's a lot of preparation going on. It's been very thorough in the last、uh, week or so、uh, to meet those、uh, government agencies.、Uh, we'll shortly have an inspection,、uh, and then after that, I'm hoping that we'll be given a, an opening date for the school. Beyond that, there's a lot more planning for us. To do. Yeah, safety first and child first. I think is is、uh, I think that everybody that is involved、uh, would would,、uh, would agree with that. I think that. Do you want to give a very brief summary in terms of、uh, in terms of that echo? 嗯，刚才的话，我们有一个观众他提到，有位家长吧，他提到了一个问题，就是有关这个新型冠状病毒之后学校的一个呃安全性。嗯，就像我们刚才所说到的，这个安全性是所有家长都比较呃重视的一个问题。新型冠状病毒这个爆发的确让我们有些措手不及。嗯，但是从学校校的这个教学的角度来说，我们是有条不紊的在开展着。当然，从线下的这个嗯教学模式变成了一个线上的一个教学模式。从高年级他们嗯需要帮助孩子们进行考试的一些准备，进行择校的一些准备，甚至到一些低幼年级，他们每天的和这个老师的一些互动。当然，我们发现这个其中比较关键的一点，嗯，孩子们每天的这样的一个互动，能够和不同的孩子有一个这样的一个交流，对孩子们整个的。生活是非常有帮助的。那么现在的话呢，我们也接到了这个嗯，教委的逐步的一些通知，嗯，比较积极的一些信号，说是哎，我们可以嗯。
准备准备开始开学了，所以说整个学校现在都在开始进行一个非常深度的一个卫生的一个清洁。呃，与此同时的话，呃，相信每一个孩子通过这样的一个嗯、呃、大型的一个呃。事件之后，大家都懂得了一个卫生的一个一个重要性，保持健康的一个重要性。所以说，嗯，在呃之后，等到呃教委给到我们一个呃更加明确的一个时间点之后，我们的校长会第一时间公布我们何时能够正常开学。Great, thanks, thanks, Echo.、Uh, really important points, and I think that's what's on everyone's mind、uh, right now.、Um, but in the final remaining five minutes,、uh, I just want to cover off two questions, if we can, that have come in.、Um, a little bit more detail on the early years. Uh, curriculum plan. I think Mrs. Westwood, you'll be able to take that. And also,、um, afterwards, there's another question on:、uh, Can you take an extra, a second or third language、uh, as well as, as well as Mandarin? So, can I can I start with you, Miss Westwood, in terms of just a little bit more detail in early years curriculum, how you approach it? So, our early years curriculum, as I said, is based on our early learning goals, and we start, and that moves from pre-nursery to nursery up into reception. And then it's the reception into the year one where we start our English national curriculum. So our early learning goals are very much broad-based personal social learning, curiosity, exploration, and beginning those independent learning skills. It's very much there is a mixture of independent exploration, play, teacher interaction, other. Person interaction between peers, between other adults in the room, and then really bringing those skills together. So there's a mixture of carpet time, of individual learning. You'll see children、um, taking those that their own learning choices. You'll see different areas of learning around the classroom. The walls have inspiration for the children, and also. Bits that they they can engage with. You'll often see water.、Um, there's the outdoor areas, and it, it's a real plethora of opportunities for the children. And it becomes more formal as the children move through the early years, but it's it's still very much that idea of independent learning, that curiosity, that real engagement with what interests them. And then that's all mixed with the underlying underpinning of early English, early maths, and understanding of the world. Yeah, that's right. So it's underpinned by the UK curriculum,、Absolutely. early years, all that structure there.、Yeah. But again, it's that the softer stuff of bringing out, which is so important. Very quick summary, if, the, if, the, if we may、uh, echo. 我想在这里补充的一点，因为有家长提到这个我们幼儿部的教学是怎么样进行开展的。其实我们的幼儿园的这个设置是非常有趣的，他们是一间间独立的教室。那么与此同时，当孩子们进行探索、在玩耍的时候，这些教室是可以被打通的。所以说，学生们会有一个更加宽敞的一个室内探索环境和室外探索环境。在这个探索的过程当中，老师会鼓励他们更加独立，鼓励他们进行一个思考。嗯。这是我们幼儿部的一个一个呃课程的一个设置。Thank you, Echo. And very briefly,、uh, can you take extra languages、uh, out, out of Mandarin? How many、uh, languages do we offer here? Yes, you can. In primary, you can take、uh, non-native Spanish and French from、uh, year three and upwards.、Uh, we also have um, um, a, um, a sc-、um, Dutch school, sorry, a Dutch school,、um, and we also have、uh, native languages after school. We have、uh, French and Spanish after school and German during the school day. In secondary, you can pick up non-native language um, German, um, a lot, or Spanish and French, and we continue with the native languages after school as well. Fantastic. So I think that、uh, I, I think we could answer. We could we could ask so many more questions, and, and so many more questions are coming in. But、uh, we do have、uh, a, a a limitation of uh, uh, of time. So.、Um, Interestingly, listening to Mr. Westwood, we do have、um, uh, an example timetable of early years, and I think that that can bring out、uh, the types of elements that, people, that, that students do.、Uh, very personal. When it gets to secondary, you can choose different languages. I think to summarise here,、uh, really there is a foundation of academic rigour based upon the UK curriculum. But if you really want your child to be the best that they can be, it's about the trust with the teachers. It's about pushing them to be the best that they can be, taking those opportunities in terms of performances and steam, and really helping them excel、uh, to become the full package for those top universities.、Um, 
Everything is personal. It's a very personalized uh, situation for, for children. So if you are interested in talking about your child and what the best uh, approach is for your child, uh, we are here. We are available to talk to you. I would encourage you to come uh, and speak to us and uh, visit us when the, when the moment is, is right. 嗯，所以说，在这个过程当中，你们会发现音效的这个教育是非常个性化的。然后呢，逐步逐步让我们的孩子们会更加的独立，然后他们开始有学业上的成就、个性上的发展，然后沟通能力的提升。那么，我们的招生团队仍旧是在这里。如果你们之后有任何的招生咨询的话，欢迎及时与我们联络。Thank you very much for taking the time.、Uh, have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we hope to be speaking to you again soon. At the British International School, Shanghai Pushi.